the weather is always changing. The roads, they're getting longer. The hunts, they're getting harder. But this is what we do. This is my team. And this is the flight. Was also brought to you by Falling Feathers Game Calls, Spectra Shot, Mike Reynolds Incorporated, AB Lanyards, Kaminsky Development, The DeWitt Company, Big Buck Creations, Wildlife Taxidermy, Four Corners Development, Native Performance Dog Food, and by Lacrosse. All right, so we left the timber hunt. We come back into southeast Missouri to hunt with another buddy of ours at In Your Face Outfitters. His name's Perry May. Now, Perry's got an awesome operation. He's got pits all over southeast Missouri and northern Arkansas. In our wind direction, the way it's coming in, our best way of setting up these decoys is in a U position. That way, whenever we cut, the birds are gonna become just like this right here coming straight into the blind and we want our focus about 15 yards away from that blind. All right, hopefully we'll pound it this morning. Finally got us some clouds, a little wind, I think we'll be all right.
This portion of the Flight TV is brought to you by Native Performance Dolphin. Heartworms um, is probably one of the most common things we're seeing right now. We are actually treating between three and 400 patients a year. Uh, I know most of the veterinarians in the River Delta are seeing an increase in the numbers of heartworm disease. Uh, the problem we've had over the past five years is we've seen some of the preventatives not work for preventing heartworm disease and the dogs are actually coming up positive on the pill. All right, so heartworms live in the right chamber of the heart and they can grow up to be 10 inches long. And so these are some worms, literally, watch this, that live inside that dog's heart. And you can see that these things will clog up the valve. You've got a valve in there that's supposed to close and that heartworm is gonna actually interfere with the closing of that valve, which leads to congestive heart failure. So it's super important not to let this, these molting stages get to the L4 stage. L4 is resistant to both the arsenic treatment we put dogs through to kill the adult worm, and it's also resistant to your prevention in the L2, L3 stage. So that's why the veterinarians want you to do your heartworm pill every 30 days. If you go beyond 30 days, some of these worms can slip through to the L4, and now they're gonna go ahead and mature into an adult. up the truck with all the hardcore decoys and we headed north. This was a spur of the moment decision. We didn't know what we were getting into, but when we arrived, we could understand why the birds were there. It was like two different worlds between Southeast Missouri and Northern Illinois. The weather for the first 30 days has been just terrible for a duck hunt. So a buddy of ours, Matt Porter from Northern Illinois, called us and said, hey guys, you wanna come up here and kill some geese? We're like, sure. So we head out and go all the way up there, 80 miles north of Chicago. Me, Roy, and Adam, we ended up up there, Porters, and it was like 70 to 75 degrees down here when we left, and it was literally in the 20s and teens in the morning when we got up there. The difference in the temperature was unreal. It, you couldn't believe it. The weather in southeast Missouri, it was terrible, so we as a team had to make a decision to go.
boys, I tell you what, I sat behind the camera last yesterday. It's my turn, Dave. I'm fixing to put the geese right in the back. So I kind of felt bad because Roy didn't have the opportunity before dark, after we got everything put together, to shoot and me film. So that night at the hotel, I, I made the decision. I said, you know what? I'm gonna let Roy hunt tomorrow with Larry and I'm gonna film. And if we get some footage, great. We'll switch the camera off, if not. Because you gotta understand what Canadian goose hunting means to Roy. It's like he loves to duck hunt. He lives, eats, and breathes it. But when you say Canadian geese and the opportunity to harvest them, the boy just transitions into a whole nother mindset. Right, we were actually in the blind with one of Matt's guides, Brian. And I tell you what, he's a first class person. I tell you what, I don't think I've ever seen anybody that can control geese the way he has. I mean, he just, he can put them in their face. If you knew me, and you knew how hard it was for me to be able to hold the camera and like, film Adam and Larry shoot these geese and I'm watching geese fall left and right and me not having a gun in my hand, I'm telling you that it was, it was troubling. That's how we de-ice our decoys. All right, now this might be one of the dumbest things we ever did, putting a piece of heavy equipment in Roy's hands. This can only end badly. This segment of the Flight TV was brought to you by Pacific Flyway Supplies for all your waterfowl supply needs. 
Just go to www.pacificflywaysupplies.com. Now, Larry, he's a little bit more reserved with his emotions, but me and Roy, I mean, we live with our emotions on the ends of our sleeves. And when we do something that's exciting, obviously, as you can tell, I mean, we're going to let the world know about it. And I felt great for letting Roy shoot that morning because I knew what was going to happen. And sure enough, we all end up getting to shoot. We all limited out geese. Brian did a great job again. And I'm telling you something, if you ever get an opportunity, I know all these people go to Canada and, and North Dakota and everywhere else to hunt these Canadians because of the high limit. But I'm going to give you a little piece of advice. If you get a chance and you're going through Northern Illinois and you want to seriously have a Canadian goose hunt of a lifetime, just like Brian, I mean, Matt is 2001 International Canadian Goose Call Champion as well. We had just a major accomplishment just happen, I guess. I mean, we're sitting in the blind today with 2001 World Junior Duck Calling Champion and 2001 International Goose Calling Champion. We're at Porter's Goose Club. And I'm gonna tell you, this is a goose hunting trip of a lifetime. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, if there was five trips in your life that you could plan, you have got to put this one on your top side of the list. You know, this morning we had the unbelievable experience of having Matt Porter in the blind with us. Matt is the owner of Porter's Hunt Club in Northern Illinois. You can go to their website at www.portersoutdoors.com 